Welcome to the Passive Income Podcast. I am your host, Dividend Dave. Please be sure to join the Passive Income Posse by clicking that subscribe button below. Super excited today to welcome back Nick. You can find him on Twitter or X at SmartNetWorth1. Uh, Nick, welcome back. Hey, man, Dave, thanks so much for having me back, man. It was It's an absolute pleasure to be back here with you. And I was so excited when you hit me up and invited me back on. It was, you know, the first one was great. So I'm sure this one is just going to be as good. So thanks again, dude. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Uh, a lot to catch up on. I, like uh, before we started recording, you said it's been, I think, nearly a year, if not maybe even over a year since the last time you were on. So um, what has changed in a year or what has stayed the same? Oh, man, you know, um, it's, uh, you, you know, the, the wealth building deal and, uh, you know, building our passive income is, is an everyday game. So it's uh, for the past, I think it was, I think it's been 10 months. I was watching uh, uh, the video that we did the other day. And I think it was 10 months ago that we that we had the first one. So since then, it's just been a, a constant diet of the same kind of thing, man. I mean, uh, as far as my investing journey, it's just been constantly staying in the market. Um, you know, like I said, it's an everyday thing. So it's, it's always uh, investing. Um, that's always that's kind of like my motto, always invested. And, uh, you know, just keep keep at it and keep consistent and, and keep uh, looking at my positions and staying in the market. Uh, that's for, for as far as uh, my my investing journey, uh, more a little bit on the personal level. Um, recently, I got engaged. So me and my lady got uh, congratulations. Engaged. Appreciate that, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, I know you're always a big a big supporter of our family. Every time I post up, you're always uh, giving me kudos, the most beautiful so. family in the Twitter community for sure. Oh, dude, man, guys, I appreciate uh, you guys that. Are awesome. I appreciate that. You always say that we're the most beautiful family on Twitter, so I, I really appreciate that, Dave. But um, yeah, man, we're we're getting uh, we're getting married on uh, in July in, in the summer, so we're excited with that. And uh, that's that's pretty much it, man. Just just staying constant and, uh, you know, just continuing to grind and, and do what I've always done to this point. Nice. Uh, nice. Uh, a lot of things there that I kind of opened up thoughts in my mind. So, you know, first, just that um, always be invested and and always in the market. So I'm guessing you're just kind of dollar cost averaging into positions that you already have and, and just accumulating, accumulating those positions. Or are you opening up more? I know you have quite a few positions. I was looking at your link tree actually earlier, and I'll bring that up on screen later, but it looks like you have over 40 positions. So do you think that's enough? Or what's your game plan there? <laughs> oh man, I always get uh, I always get both sides of the coin on that. I have people saying, is that enough? And I have people saying, man, that's way too much. How do you manage the whole thing? Um, so for right now, actually in the, in the past few months, I think uh, from, I wanna say April, uh, to this point, April of last year to this point, um, I kind of downsized my portfolio a little bit. I kind of condensed it a little bit because I was I was running pretty heavy for a while. I was in the 60 position range. And uh, what I decided to do wow. was the later part of the year last year, I kind of condensed some of the positions that I had and um, I wanted more exposure to ETFs. So us as dividend investors, uh, I wanted to lay that foundation for SEHD. So I kind of condensed some of my positions that I was, uh, you know, I don't want to say that I wasn't keen on them, but a lot of the positions that I had individually, uh, they were inside of the index. So what I kind of did was I just kind of consolidated that and I uh, put a bunch into SEHD when it had a, a nice dip. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm kind of um, I'm kind of doing things a little bit backwards as far as what people normally do. Usually people kind of like they go the growth route. And then they, as they get older, they start to incorporate some income. But I kind of did it the other way. I kind of did, um, I kind of laid a, a foundation of income and uh, a little less growth. And then um, right now I'm starting to uh, increase my exposure into more growth and more ETFs and index funds and kind of doing it that route. So I'm kind of taking like kind of a little bit of a different approach, but it's working for me. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Yeah, and I think that's great. Like. Hey, you know what? Getting some of that passive income coming in in dividends right off the hop, and then suddenly you have you have that money to reinvest right away, and you can reinvest that either into growth stocks or into into more passive income dividend paying stocks, right? And I think yeah, that's man. I think that's incredibly smart, smart net worth. Exactly what you did, <laughs> uh, consolidating down maybe some twenty positions into one or two ETFs, right? Like. Cause I still think I'm on the side of wow, 40 is a lot, right? I'm, I'm in around the 25 mark and I feel 25 is a lot. And 
there are more that I would like to buy. I could easily run that up to 30 or 35, but then it becomes like, okay, well, if I'm, I've only got so much money to go around, right. Am, am, am I going to be able to accumulate enough of those other shares or of those other companies that, that either the dividends add up or begin to add up or like, does it make a difference, right? If you have, if you have one share of a company just to say you own it, well, Hey, that's cool. That's neat. But you know, you kind of do need to get up. You need to accumulate, you know, yeah, I, I think a hundred, yeah. a thousand shares of whatever company to, to actually sort of make a difference. Like if, if, a, if a ticker, you know, the, the, the price actually skyrockets and you have, one share that doesn't make much difference but if you have a thousand shares that makes a huge difference right yeah man for sure the position size definitely matters and um you know i'm, I'm not really from that camp of okay i'm gonna own one share and then uh you know just take ownership of of being an owner in that company um i want to i want to be an owner and i want to own multiple shares so right. when i look at when i look at a stock and i'm sure the same way you do i deep dive into uh you know i deep dived into everything from the ground up and then I start to accumulate as I go. And it's, and it's never an idea of, okay, I'm good with one share. It's, it's the idea of, you know, like accumulating and, and yeah. keep, keep banging it down and, and build that position. And also, I think that it's important as dividend investors, because, you know, you and I are both individual stock investors. And I think it's also important to have a, uh, a baseline of, of what you're comfortable with and what you have in mind as far as full position. And that's going to vary as far as different companies and different sectors. And, but you gotta be, you gotta understand that there's a time that you gotta say to yourself, okay, what is full position for this sector for me? And, right. um, you know, different things are going to, uh, you know, different things are gonna cater differently as far as how big you want those positions. Like I'll give you an example, like um, REITs. REITs were heavy on sale the past year, right? So I went heavy into realty income. Oh, uh, triple net lease the um, company. And I felt comfortable with that because I liked the sector. And then I also said to myself, how much is full position on this position? And that's what I did. I just kept accumulating and accumulating and accumulating until I felt that it was in full position. Now it could be different for something uh, maybe a little more risky in, in your opinion or something that you don't feel as comfortable with, that might be a lower number. But for us, I think that, especially for my approach, I, I'm always in the, from the camp of, okay, I started this position, I'm gonna get this position to a certain amount, and then I'm gonna let it go and reinvest the dividend and let it drip. Um, I'll, give you an, I'll give you another example. Recently, um, oil has been coming down. And what I've done is I've increased my positions in two companies that I own. One is Chevron, I wanted to get that to at least $10,000 invested. And that's what I did. Once I reached that $10,000, I moved on. I moved on to Exxon. Exxon was actually a new position for me. So I'm building it as we go now. And I'm watching it and watching it and watching it. And anytime it, it goes under 100 bucks, I buy shares. And I have that mindset of, I need to get this one to $10,000 as well. So right now I'm in like the right. $4,500 range. And once I hit that $10,000 mark invested in that company, I'm gonna let it go and move on to the next sector that's undervalued in my portfolio. And it's just a constant, constant, constant view of that. And that's that's really the bread and butter of my 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 strategy. And um, that's pretty much what I've done to this point, dude. Yeah, I, I love that strategy, actually. I'm I'm happy you brought up REITs, but also kind of not because I <laughs> I was very heavy into REITs prior to last year when when they got hit really hard with uh, obviously interest rates and and inflation and all of a sudden like you said they went on sale well that wasn't great for me because i already had i was already overexposed in the REIT sector and so a lot of my port val portfolio value did drop from the REITs and then i also suffered i don't even want to tell you how many dividend cuts uh i i had last year right it was it was painful it was extremely yeah. painful yeah, there was there was a lot of them that a lot of people went through, and uh, that just shows you too, dude. That investing uh, takes courage, and it's something that can't be taught, and it's got to come from within. And dividend cuts are part of the game, man. You know more than anybody. Dividend cuts are are part of it. So you got to be able to weather that storm. And you know the REIT sector, it really got beat up, man. The past like 12, 13 yeah. months, it really got beat up. So we got to take our punches, but we got to keep moving forward. And, and that's another that's another discussion of, you know, dividend cuts and how you manage that. And what do you do looking forward? 
and uh, you know, we can go on forever about that. But yeah, it's it's part of it, dude. And and a lot of people got hit hard, not just you, man. Yeah, well, obviously everyone is much happier to talk about uh, dividend raises, which are obviously the much happier side of that coin. And yeah. I, you know, I haven't sold any of those positions as of yet. I, I'm still overexposed in the REIT sector, but I'm like, it's not really hurting me to just hold on to them because who knows what's going to happen in another year, two years, three years, like, you know, REITs, it's real estate. There's, they own physical buildings and properties. So real estate generally does go up over time. So maybe five years down the road, I'm going to look back and say, Hey, yeah, I took my punches back in, in 2023, but I'm pretty happy that I, that I held strong for five or seven or 10 years. Right. Yeah, man, that that's what it is. And you know, you're a smart guy, dude. Let's let's be honest here. You're a real smart guy. And, <laughs> well, some <laughs> there's there's a lot of people out there a lot smarter than me. I can guarantee you that. Me too, man. I mean, this you know, I'm just an average guy doing this. There's there's always going to be a person smarter than you doing it. But uh, for you, you know, you know how to weather these things, and uh, I like that approach, man. Like I, in in my opinion, um, dividend cuts could be a healthy thing for a company because uh, look at something yeah. like uh, look at Intel, right? And this is not really the best example because I did sell Intel to put my proceeds into SEHD earlier in the year. But uh, Intel went on a crazy run after their cut. They went up like 75% for the year. And um, it's like I said, it's, it, it's a gift and a curse because it's a curse on your emotional well-being as, as an investor, right? We, as, especially as a dividend investor, we're like, man, they cut the dividend. Yeah, and uh, your bottom line. All of a sudden, your, your dividends are getting cut in half from that, from that one position, right? Right, exactly. And I think that's something that a lot of people can't stomach. And then, but on the other side, they're taking the profits and they're taking the money that they're making. And instead of giving it to us as investors, they're putting it back into the business to improve operations and then probably yeah. bring back the dividend. I mean, we've seen yeah. it multiple times. Ford did it. Ford fell to a ridiculous low. They cut the dividend and then the thing shot back up, you know, to a ridiculous high. So, you know, it's, it's a gift and a curse. And uh, that's also like I tell you, man, like everything has to be a system when you're an investor, especially a, a, a individual stock dividend investor, you got to have systems for everything because, you know, the world of investing is unknown and we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So you got to be able to maneuver and you got to have some kind of strategy for everything that goes on on a daily, you know, so it's not just, okay, let's buy Coca-Cola stock, let's reinvest the dividend and then we're done a, a little bit more involved as far as uh you know right. looking at the entire big picture i am glad you brought that up though about sort of weathering the storm of a dividend cut because yeah quite often the company now they're not giving that cash back to the investors they're taking that cash and paying down debt investing in r d buying back shares or a plethora of other things that they could be doing uh to increase the value of the company and, and you just gave some great examples there with intel and ford and so yeah, I, I, again, going back to my to my REITs, I'm kind of hoping that again down down the road, I'm I'm happy that I've just sort of held strong. And a lot yeah. of those positions are relatively small, like say a hundred shares and a hundred shares in in companies that are trading at somewhere like in the eight to ten dollar range, right? So it's yeah. it's not like it's adding up to a, you know a giant a, a dollar amount. And obviously, I have larger positions or uh, in in higher priced companies that I'm you know, more comfortable with, right? Um, Canadian banks, obviously one of those ones that- oh, sure. Those are gems, man. Those are gems. <laughs> right? So um, do you have any Canadian banks? Well, um, I have Bank of Montreal. I've been with them since like 2018 when I first started. So uh, they've been great to me, man. But I do want more yeah. exposure. I do want more exposure to the Canadian banks because it's just, you know, like the, the history is there. And, and for the most part, they're healthy. They stayed resilient when it, there was the big dip. So, um, you know, I definitely that's part of one of my strategy points for this coming year that I want a little bit more exposure to uh, the Canadian banks and just the financial sector in, in, in general. I want a little bit more exposure to that sector. You probably know the answer to this because uh, at Settling Nomads tweets it every so often, but Bank of Montreal is the, the uh, out of the big five or six Canadian banks that's been paying a dividend the longest. Do you, do you remember or recall what year they started paying a dividend? Oh, man, it was, what was it? I don't recall the, the year offhand, but I know it's been a very, very long time. And like you said, it's, it was the longest out of the big five. I know that. So uh, Yeah, 1829. 1829. Uh, coming up soon. 
on a 200 year anniversary. So yeah, in five years, it'll be 200 years that they've been paying a dividend, which obviously unbelievable. is unbelievable, right? Like I, oh, I've yeah. actually thought about this too. Like back in 1829, you actually had to ride your horse to the bank to pick up your dividend check. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. So, um, what else are we going to get into here? Sorry, that little, uh, that little bump sort of, uh, messed with my with my thought process a little bit sorry so. <laughs> man yeah i don't know we we dropped a little bit but that's all right we're gonna keep it going here all good all good let's let's switch gears you talked about getting married in the summer and we do see that quite a bit on twitter i, I did want to bring this up when you mentioned it you know obviously people spend tens of even hundreds of thousands of dollars on a wedding and i'm guessing you're probably going to be a little bit more frugal than that sure you're still going to spend money have a good time and whatever but um I, I guess how are you walking that that tightrope uh well um we see a lot on twitter that you know everybody talks about how um you know it's foolish to spend so much money on a, on a wedding and uh you know certain parts of the country maybe a little bit more a little bit less and also the idea of uh, marrying the right person right and uh i'm fortunate man i'm gonna be honest with you my lady is uh she's from the same camp as me and um, she kind of, you know, follows my lead as far as finances and, and the way that I see things. So I am extremely fortunate on that end. I don't even have to worry about that side. Uh, we're, we're definitely on the same page. So uh, we just kind of approached it with, I don't want to say a frugal mindset, but more of like, how much of this can we do ourselves? And how can we get this to be a beautiful day that we're always going to remember, but at a uh, efficient cost? And um, we've done we've done well so far. We found a good venue, uh, you know, finding the vendors it may be a little bit more pricey. But, you know, as far as uh, getting the wedding going and, you know, the decoration and all this stuff, uh, typically a lot of things that people spend a ton of money on, uh, we're, we're kind of shying away from that. And we're going to do a lot of this stuff ourselves and uh, find other people to help us. So, um, you know, that that's been kind of our our approach. But uh, we're, we're not going to be spending one hundred thousand dollars on a wedding. I mean, it's, that's not you know, that's, to me, that's financial suicide. And right. uh, like like I said, man, it's I am extremely blessed to, to be with a woman that, uh, you know, shares the same values and views financially as me. And, um, you know, she kind of just like goes with the flow, which is like, you know, to me, it's that's I can't ask for better. So that's kind of been our approach. And it's, it's going to be a great day, but it's going to be, uh, you know, like I said, efficient as far as cost of the entire big picture wedding. Yeah, it's obviously it's pretty easy to run up uh, a, a really big tab on a wedding, you know, the wedding dress, the cake, uh, the, the meal, everything. Yeah. Man. Um, and like you mentioned, even just coming down to decorations and so much more. And uh, dude, the flowers, I, just like flowers, the flowers, man. everything no it adds up so fast, right? Are. Dude, in, insane. Like people are spending. The, the person that that's helping us at the venue, they're telling us that they've seen people spend 50, 75, 100 grand on flowers. I'm like, how much is your wedding if you're you're spending 100 grand on flowers? Right. Wow. That yeah, man, crazy. That's mind boggling to me. Right. Very, Dude, very much. I can't even imagine it to be honest. No. Well, I'm glad that you're navigating uh, navigating that. Uh, sensibly right like yes it is going to cost money and you are going to have a great day and it's going to be a day that you remember for the rest of your life it sounds awesome that you you know found the right person that you're on the same page uh with everything obviously your family and your kids and but financially as well is obviously a big part of that and yeah definitely don't go and spend a hundred grand on the wedding <laughs> <laughs> no i don't think so man i think we're we're more from the camp of uh you know, let's let's have a nice wedding, a beautiful day, and the efficient cost, but but you know, have some money for if we're gonna buy a house or you know, right. like something along those lines that's gonna increase in value instead of just kind of you know depreciating liability. So that's actually a great segue because I was I wanted to talk to you about real estate and home ownership, and so where where do you see yourself there or in the future? You just mentioned about buying a house. Um, if I recall, you're in like the greater New York area. So I'm guessing real estate there is astronomical. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we're yeah, we we, we live um, we live in Connecticut, uh, but we work in New York and I'm originally from Yonkers, New York. So uh, very high cost of living area, Dave, very high cost of living, uh, you know, average ticket price for uh, for a house in our area is, 
you know, 600, 700,000 for a reasonably sized family house. So, right. um, you know, just astronomical, um, you know, right now the inventory is low, um, you know, interest rates are just kind of running the market right now. And it's kind of demanding what the demand is and, and how many buyers are in the market. And, uh, you know, the interest rate environment, especially because it's so high, it's like I said, it's running everything. And you got people that in my area, you know, that are just sitting on equity in their house because they can't buy anything else because the interest rates are so high. So the inventory is very low. And with an environment like that, it's hard, man. It's hard to get into real estate. And, um, you know, so we're, we're, we're talking about different ideas and relocating and, uh, you know, we like Texas. So we're, we're looking at that to potentially uh, relocate down the road. Um, we have plans. Um, we don't see ourselves staying in this area for too much longer because it's just too expensive. And, you know, we, we want to be owners of real estate. And um, I'm sure, you know, you've seen me post about it. I do rental properties as well. And it's hard, man. It's hard to find something around here that cash flows because of the uh, the high cost of living, high prices on uh, houses, properties, and also the interest rates. So, you know, we're, we're trying to navigate through that. Uh, we do see ourselves in Texas down the road. Um, that's kind of where we're, we're leaning. And um, yeah, man, that's what we're going to, we're going to start to put that in place and start to get that ready. And, um, you know, I, I want more real estate. I want more rental properties. That's part of my whole deal. That's part of the, the approach that I have with dividend investing and rental properties. And I'm sure you see it. I talk about it all the time. I'm probably make people crazy at this point. I'm always preaching that on Twitter, but that's my deal. And that's, that's what I love. And that's what I, um, I, I see myself doing down the road. I see myself, uh, just being a, a manager of my assets and that's, that's the life that I want to live. And I want to uh, pass it down to my family. I want the girls to get involved in our business and, uh, you know, and start to work with us and manage some of our stuff and, you know, like kind of have a, a family approach to it. So, you know, that's kind of what we're looking at as far as real estate. But like I said, we, we really, really love Texas. Uh, we, we went to go see the Houston area over the summer and we fell in love and that's where we want to be. So uh, we're kind of getting the, the wedding done first and then we're going to go back to the drawing board and see how we can get this done and, and get the next move ready. Yeah, well, you're one, you're you're preaching uh, cash flow, whether it's uh, dividends or, or real estate rental properties, you're preaching uh uh, cash flow and to a lot of people in the you know fin twit div twit community you're kind of preaching to the choir so i don't yeah. think you're annoying anyone <laughs> i hope not man because I'm, I'm i'm just resilient with my message and it's it's uh like i said i i approach this as an everyday thing and uh you know my lady will tell you because i'm always driving her nutty but um you know um, uh, I'm not that she takes it like that. She likes hearing about this stuff, but it's just me. It's just, a, I'm always on it. I'm always, even when we, we're driving down the street, I say, man, I wonder what that's worth. I wonder what they're getting on rent on that. I wonder what, hey, look, uh, Exxon Station, man, they're paying me a dividend. Hey, look over here. So it's just a constant, it's a it's a flow in my mind, bro. It's it's the it's the money flow. Yeah. That's what it is. It's The world is revolves nice. around money and it's just me just always staying in tune with the market and always just in the money flow, you know? Yeah, I do. Money flow. I love that. I, you also mentioned like moving out of an expensive area to a more affordable area. Do you see more people, more and more people uh, doing that? Do you think more people would be interested in, in getting away from those larger urban centers that, that cost so much money? Um, I think we're seeing it a little bit more here. And obviously Toronto and Vancouver are the two big uh, expensive cities in Canada. Um and I and I'm just guessing New York. Well, I'm sure L.A. and Miami are probably like the three big most expensive cities in, in the U.S. Um, yeah, yeah. Man, I guess, sir. Sure. What are your thoughts? I, well, I guess your personal thoughts are, yeah, let's do it. But overall, do you see more people kind of choosing that path? Yeah, for sure. And I think um, I think that it, it takes a certain mindset to identify that that you're kind of just treading water. And I think uh, a lot of people in high high cost of living areas like the big cities i think that um eventually you know as you go i think that you're not doing yourself any favors because you're not going to buy you're not going to be able to buy property there and you're not going to be able to do certain things that you would be able to do in a lower cost environment so i think yeah man i think uh, i think it takes a lot of courage i think it takes uh, an appetite of risk and uh, i think i have both of those and, uh, you know, just just kind of like this is life, man. And, and you, you got to decide what you want your life to be. 
And if you're in New York, like we, we have our entire lives, uh, it's, a, it's a challenge, you know, and, and it's a challenge with the prices and it's a challenge with, um, you know, like trying to level up because of the, the high ticket area. So um, I think that I think, yeah, I think a lot of people are, are trying to navigate through that. And I think one of the solutions is, is leaving and, and getting going to an area that's more affordable. Um, like I'll give you an example, like somebody that's um, let's say somebody that's here in New York or close to New York City. Right. They're not going to be able to buy a, a, a condo in Midtown because it's it's going to be millions of dollars, you know. Right. But uh, but someone like uh, the frugal gay, Tom Brickman, that's my boy. Right. Uh, he's on yeah. he's on X and, you know, he's me and him are always talking. He's heavy in, in uh, Toledo, Ohio. Right. So you could buy a rental property there for one hundred thousand dollars and you can get cash flow and you could just keep repeating that process. But something like a Miami or a L.A. or a New York or a Chicago, it's damn near impossible, man. So, you know, that's I think that that leap of faith that people take uh, moving and, uh, you know, being being courageous about that and, and getting up and going. I think um, I think it, it's only a good thing. And uh, change is good when you manage it. So, uh, you know. I think, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people are doing that. And uh, I honor that, man. I, 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 I see a lot of value in that. And, um, you know, a lot of people uh, stay in the same area their whole lives and they just stay stagnant. And that's a way to, to fight against that. And, um, you know, you know, more than anybody in this, this game of life, if you're going to be a person that's building wealth, you got to fight for that, man. You got to be able to get out there and make changes and, uh, you know, stand on your two feet and, and keep your head up and do it. You know, whether that means leaving your hometown that you've always been your whole life and going to a new area because you can buy rental properties there or you can get a better paying job or you can, you know, free up some more of your money to do other things. Um, you know, I think that that's definitely a cool approach and I honor people that do that for sure. Yeah, uh, first shout out to Tom, Tom Brickman. He's been here on the Passive Income podcast. Oh, many, many, many episodes ago. So uh Comment below if you'd like to see Tom come back on. I'd, I'd definitely love to have him. I do love his uh, tweets as well. The be too, before man. and after pictures are just absolutely amazing. He's like, you know, takes these old rundown properties and just turns them into um, something beautiful, like updated. And so, yeah, yeah man, he's, he's, he's a magician. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me just say, if I could say just a, a thing about Tom, if, if you don't mind real, real quick, Dave. I just wanted to give him a shout out because, um, you know, I don't get a chance to do this a lot with him. There's been a few people in the community uh, when I first started on Twitter. Uh, I was lost and I had no idea what I was doing. And he was one of the people, him and Colin, a, a decade investor. Those two, um, they kind of took me under their wing. And uh, without me asking or anything, they helped me and they guided me and they saw something in me. So I, I'm forever in debt to Tom and Colin. Uh, those guys have been great to me um they both have great hearts and um you know i appreciate those guys so if anybody is watching this uh if they're watching this i appreciate you guys and uh you know go give those guys a follow because those are those are two good dudes yeah for sure yeah colin was on here once way way back when as well so i definitely love having people back on now that i've been doing this for well over a year and i've had so many great i uh, episodes and guests so it's it's really fun to reconnect like you said uh 10 or 12 months later and just catch up and sort of see what's happened in your life and what's happening and it's obviously it's a lot the same you know just kind of plugging along but then you know you're still working towards so many uh new goals as well or and you've got you know life is a constant and life changes sort of at the same time right yeah man life life is unpredictable man that's 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 the the beauty about it that you know and also the challenges too, right? Because in life, um, I listen to a lot of Jim Rohn. He's a motivational speaker. And, uh, you know, he's always preaching that life is unpredictable, but you got to be able to, to manage it as it comes, you know? And we don't know. We don't know what the challenges that we're going to face during this, uh, you know, this process of life. And we just think about our normal state. We're, we're resilient. As human beings, we're resilient. You know, that's what our ancestors were. And that's the baseline of being a human, that we're resilient. So I think, um, you know, just like you said, man, like, it's unpredictable, but you got to be able to to welcome the challenge and be able to get through it to weather the storm, like we said, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, I do want to bring up uh, your link tree here. 
So right off the top, get access to my 40 position dividend portfolio. Yes, and sir. Yeah, go ahead. Talk to that. Yeah, that's a that's a um, a company that we're I'm partnering with. Uh, they're called Savvy Trader. Um, they allow me to put my portfolio on there uh, with allocations, so you guys can take a look at uh, what it is. Um, it's there's also a membership option that you can subscribe to, and you can see my uh, my live trades and uh, get more into my portfolio as far as uh, dollar value. Um, and, but it's a great platform. It shows everything. It gives you an insight. It allows you to ask me questions. We communicate. I put posts up. So it's really a nice little community that I'm building there. And it's been nothing but great so far. And there you can see my entire portfolio as I add stocks, as I um, take away something, which is probably not going to be a lot this year. Um, but all my moves that I make are, are through there. So um, really a great platform. It's been nothing but great so far. So um, if anybody is interested, you can go check that out and see what's on there. Next one, Introduction to Dividend Investing, A Beginner's Guide to Growing Wealth with Dividend Stocks. Yes, sir. That was That's my ebook that I have uh, for a very small cost. And uh, it just gives a, a pretty much like a, a baseline of dividend investing and all the bells and whistles as far as an introduction. So uh, that was I made that when I first started on, on Twitter because I was just getting a constant, constant flow of DMs about, you know, what, what, what is dividend investing? You make this much. How'd you do it? Um, what do you think of this stock? What do you think of that stock? So a lot of that um, allowed me to kind of generate the idea of making this book. And it's a beautiful baseline, man. I mean, I'm not just saying that because it's my book. It's it's well done. It's beautifully edited. And, um, you know, it's a pleasure to read. So if anybody is interested in just kind of getting like a, a baseline knowledge of, of the game that we play here, that's that's a nice resource to have. Okay. Free dividend research guide. All right. So that's the one that, again, I, I made that when I first started. That was also from the idea of a lot of the inquiries I was getting from followers. They wanted to know uh, what I look at and why I look at it. So I said, you know what, let me make a guide that kind of just, uh, you know, that showcases everything that I look at as far as the, the deep dive of a company and what to look for, what I look for. Uh, you know, everything is subjective, you know that, but this is just my approach. And uh, that's been great, too. I got a, I get a lot of nice feedback on that. And uh, I think it's a sound piece of uh, resource. So, um, yeah, that's my little, uh, my free gift to the followers there. Nice. Um, and then socials, uh, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm going to skip over that because I'm going to come back to it here in a second. Uh, sure. This link tree will be available in the description below. And there you are on Twitter. There I X, am. Whatever we're calling it these days. And I see here you are pushing 50,000 followers. Almost, man. Almost. I'm almost at that 50K mark. And, uh, man, I, I never in a million years would have thought that I'd be at this point. So, uh, you know, just a shout out to all the followers. Shout out to you, Dave. You're always plugging my stuff. And shout out to the community that we talk to every day. I mean, it's it's literally every day, Dave. You, I see you on there every day. You see me on it every day. We talk to the same people. Um, it's for the community. So uh, again, I appreciate you guys. And uh, never in a million years thought that, you know, some dude from Yonkers that's a phys ed teacher just buying dividend stocks, anybody would care about what I'm saying. So um, definitely kudos to the followers, man, for sure. Yeah, huge shout out there. You, uh, you know, you're, you will be over 50,000 soon and, and well on your way to that uh, six digit mark of 100,000 followers, I'm sure. I hope so, man. That's my goal. I'm um, just a, just a, 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 you know, constant flow of good content, things that people want to know about you know, my journey. And let me tell you something, Dave, a lot of this Twitter, because sometimes I, I scroll through my page and I see like, man, that was a good tweet that hit pretty good. That was that was not so good. Let me take that out. Let me not do that again. And a lot of it, a lot of it is just me talking to me. And it's me just, you know, the messages to myself, the talks that I have with myself, uh, maybe driving in the car by myself, just thinking on what am I going to do with my portfolio, thinking on a company, thinking on a stock, thinking on a rental property. So a lot of my tweets are are really, and I'm not joking when I say this, a lot of it is just me staying in my own ear and me staying in that constant flow of, you know, just the market and, and staying in tune of, you know, like I said, like just the money around me and, and growing my money and, you know, just a constant a constant go with that i'm gonna read a couple of your tweets here just off the top it looks like your your last tweet from 12 hours ago your life changes when you change six years ago i decided to get good at growing money and never looked back 
So I think that's crucial. Just get, you know, change your mindset, right? Of yeah, man, that's that's. I'm going to make is. my money, make more money, and you just have to change, exactly. make your mind up that that's what you're going to do. Exactly, dude. Exactly, and that's you know that I get that from Jim Rohn. He's he's one of my favorite motivational speakers, and um, you know that's what he always says. He always says nothing's going to change until you change. So uh, yeah, and that's that's it, man. That's it. And, and just going back to what I said before, that you you got to make that decision. And part of being uh, uh, being a person that's that's building wealth is you got to be real about it. You got to be real with yourself and you got to be able to say to yourself, this is something that I'm going to commit to. And it's funny, I was just talking about this with um, uh, Nate. We were on a space earlier in the week and I was talking about this exact thing. And uh, that's what it is. And um, I'm going to be honest with you, Dave. It's, it's the way that, that it is, is that, uh, you know, you got to fight for it, man, because life, life is going to take that from you. And, uh, you know, not purposely, but life has a way of distracting you. Life has a way of uh, derailing you from what you're trying to do. So your focus has got to be your, your main point. And uh, whatever you focus on, that's what's going to continue to be a thing in your life. So, um, you know, you got to fight for that. You got to be able to do it every day. Um, you got to be a person that wants to do this. So, um, you know, just going back to that, your life will change when you change. And that's, man, that's so true. And I, I think that's so dear to me, those messages, because I've, I've been there and I've lived it. So, uh, you know, just that idea of just keeping your focus on it, uh, having, your having your dedication there, staying committed. And, uh, you know, that's how it happens. I want to point out your uh, pinned tweet here as well. September 12th, 2022. So nearly a year and a half old. My dividend income just passed 12000 a year. Yes, it is hard. Yes, I had to make sacrifices, but yes, it's absolutely worth it. It happens one share at a time. Next goal, next goal, twenty thousand annually. So, um, is it time to update your pin to tweet? <laughs> you know what it is, man. I keep that on there. It's funny you say that, Dave. I keep that on there because I want to see it every day. And again, it's a it's a message of me talking to me. That was my first tweet ever, and I oh. had seven, dude. I had seventeen followers when I put that tweet out. And um, I was always a person that just scrolled on Twitter. Um, I, I would follow one of the first persons that I, or people that I followed was Dividend Dog, Teddy. And oh, yeah, he's boy. awesome. Dude, that's my boy now. Like, I've, I've met him in person. I've kicked it with him. And that's, that's my guy, man. Like, I, yeah. I, I value him and I respect the guy a lot. And um, I would always, you know, look at his stuff and look at um, the millionaire coaches stuff, Andy. And it was, you know, I was a follower. I was, I wasn't tweeting or anything. I was just kind of like in incognito mode. And then I said, you know what? Let me, let me throw something out there. I'm in the game now. I'm an investor. I got some dividend income. Let me see what people think. And I threw that out there just as a, you know, just as on a hunch and it blew up and I got like 2000 followers in a day. And oh, I said, wow. Yeah, dude, it was nuts. So I said, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to do this and I'm going to, I'm going to get in there and I'm going to start influencing people to do what I'm doing. And it just took off from there. So I keep that as a reminder. I keep that for, for me to see it every day, to keep me on my, on my toes, keep me on my feet, and to know where I came from. Because that was, that was a $12,000 mark for me. And now I'm approaching $16,000. So it's, it's motivation. And a lot of the time, we got we to gotta keep motivated ourselves. And I right. do that by, by those little tricks, like keeping things in front of me and saying, man, like, I was at I was at twelve thousand dollars a year and a half ago, and look at me now. Where am I going to be in another year and a half? And these are yeah. the talks that I have with myself every day. I'm going to share another one. This is also in the link tree. The subscribed subscribe to YouTube, and I think this is very impressive that you have 176 subscribers on YouTube. But I look down here, and this channel doesn't have any content. <laughs> Yeah, man, this is this has been one of my downfalls, to be honest. And, you know, one of the pillars of success is take full responsibility. And I, I take full responsibility for this. I have not uh, gotten that off the ground. And, uh, you know, I just keep making excuses as to why I haven't been able to to generate some YouTube videos. But, um, you know, I got to buckle down and I got to start doing this because that's that's the next chapter of this story. And uh, there's there's nothing that's getting in my way. There's nothing stopping me. It's just me in my own head, and it's just me making excuses. And I and I'm aware of that. And I'm not perfect, you know. And I make mistakes. And this is definitely um, an area that I need to improve on for sure. Because it's not fair to the people that are subscribing to me. They're expecting some content, and it's not there. So I take full responsibility for that, and I and I make it uh, oath to do better. 
I well, I just made it 177 uh, subscribers. So <laughs> thanks, Dave. You, you'd better come out with something soon. <laughs> I got you, man. I'm making a, I'm making a, a promise to myself in 2024 that we're gonna get that off the ground and we're gonna get that going. Awesome. Uh, what what do you think you're gonna do? Just sort of like um, because you gotta um, try to make it a little bit different, right? Whereas there's so many other channels out there that's like, here's my dividend portfolio. Here's the stocks I'm buying this week. And hey, nothing wrong with those. Shout out to guys like, uh, you know, Retire with Ryan. He makes great content. You know, Russ. Russ makes great content. Yes, there's yes. so many people that do make uh, great content. And it is really hard to, you know, kind of stand out in the crowd, right? Yeah. Darth Dividend, another one that just is yeah. relentless with his uh, pursuit of, div of uh, YouTube videos. But um, yeah, I think, dude, you know what it is? I think that uh, one of my strong points and where, um, you know, I have an advantage in this game is my mindset. And I am just so dedicated and I'm so consistent. So I think that I'd like to also sprinkle that in instead of just saying like, yeah, I'm buying Coca-Cola stock this week. I wanna, I wanna show you like my thought process of how yeah. I stay, stay in the game so, so good. And, how I stay committed and focused on an everyday basis. So that's, I think that's one of my approaches that I want to uh, start to incorporate the mental side of what it takes to be an investor. Right, right. And honestly, that's sort of one of the reasons or, or how I ended up started doing this type of content was, is like, well, one, I know I'm just good at talking to people. Two, I like talking about investing and dividends and, and real estate investing or options trading. I don't know anything about options trading, but I've had some great guests on here try to explain it to me. I still don't understand it at all, but right. So I, I you know, I kind of went down that path of like, I can do something that's hopefully still pro providing value to the viewers, but at the same time, it's a little bit different than what everybody else is doing. Yeah, man, that's that's absolutely true. That's you know, and then also I think that everybody they they have the capability of putting their own little sizzle on things. You know, like we might be talking about the same thing, but the way that I talk or the way that I say something might be a little different. It might have a little bit more of a flair than somebody else. So uh, you know, it's just I think that that people gravitate to different kinds of approaches. You know, yeah, for sure, for sure. How I actually came up for this idea, I don't think I've ever shared this with anybody or said it on on here before but do you know who colin and samir are um colin and samir so they I'm have not nothing sure. to do with the investing community or or dividend investing they are uh basically they're i think they're based in la and they're they basically have something like this but uh they interview and uh, have conversations with like the big youtubers right like ryan trahan and mr beast and air oh, okay and so i kind of got the idea of like okay, well, they're just talking to people. I'm like, I could do that, but with what, you know, with what I'm good at in the sort of the, the investing and, and sure. that. so that's yeah, how, man, that's, that's how it all started a year and a half ago. <laughs> that's great, man. And you're saying, Hey man, you got the personality for it. You got the, the vibe, you got the voice. You sound like you're on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> that actually, uh, way back in my, you know, early twenties, that was a, a career path I thought about, but also, way back then, when when the internet was just starting out, we hadn't we nobody knew what, what was going to happen to radio. It was like, is, is radio going to die when the internet? Because all of a sudden there was internet radio everywhere, and it was like, mm, I'm not sure if radio. And now looking back on it, you know, 25, 30 years later, it's like, oh, maybe I should have went into radio. <laughs> radio is still going strong all these years later. Yeah, isn't that amazing? But you got a great voice, man. I I tell people all the time that you could definitely do like voiceovers or something along those lines, like your voice is, is meant for the microphone. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure really how long we've been going because I, my timer is at 30 minutes, but I know we had that uh, 10 or 15 minutes prior to this. Yeah. I, just want to I, think we're, of, we're, I think we're probably at about 45 minutes or so. Yeah. I just want to open up the floor to you, sort of uh, anything else that we haven't talked about that you'd like to touch on. Um, you know, it's, um, what else could we say here? We just, you know, you know, my deal, man. I, I try to, I try to be a person that is, uh, uh someone, uh, someone that, that we can use or some, you know, like a, a resource that people can have that they know I'm always going to be there. Um, and then I, I, I'm talking about the idea of just staying consistent. And, um, you know, I think that it's motivation because it helped me. And when I first started, I would see people, you know, in the morning, put out a tweet. Uh, I'm looking to buy this. I'm looking at this chart. I'm looking at this company. Hey, what did this CEO say? What did this CEO say? 
So I try to be that person and I try to stay in the flow and I try to allow people to feel my vibe. And, uh, you know, I'm a big proponent of lead by example. And I do, I try to do that in my own family. I try to be a person that they can always come to. I always try to have a positive vibe. And um, it, that's really helped me with, uh, you know, being an investor and, uh, and continuing to be an investor. So I think a lot of those things, like, um, I, I, I don't know, man, like, just for me, I, I never understood like the the approach of like, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put an automatic buy in my portfolio, and then I'm just gonna walk away. Um, I, I don't agree with that, to be honest. I, I think that if you want to give yourself a shot at this, and, and we only get one life to live, why not go hard, you know? Mm -hmm. And also, I feel that I'm, I'm a big proponent of everything comes in waves and seasons in your life. And for me, I'm 36 years old. Um, I decided that my 30s is going to be the season of my life that I lay the foundation and the base financially for the rest of my life. Yeah. So I'm, I'm big on that, man. And, um, you know, I, I try to articulate that to, to the audience and uh, anytime that I speak, because I think it's it's so true that you know, think about it. And uh, Colin actually told me this, and this this rang a bell. Like this, this really touched me. That he he told me that if you think about it, people are living until they're 80, 90, 100 years old. I mean, let's be honest, right? Yeah. And if you dedicate, uh, let's say, seven to ten years of your life to lay that foundation of your investing, that's going to pay you for the rest of your life and allow you you and your family to live good forever that's a very small percentage of your overall life. And I think people just can't handle that. And they say like seven to 10 years to be frugal and to go hard at something. So I'm set up for the rest of my life. That doesn't appease to me. I don't, I don't want to dedicate that much time. And, you know, when you break it down as far as like a small percentage of your overall life, it's, it's almost like, man, like, how can I not do this? How can I not go hard and, and try to accomplish this so I can live good forever? Yeah, so, that's a um, great point. You know, that really, man, when he said that to me, that really, because I've always, you know, I've always been a proponent of, you know, knowing that there's certain seasons, you know, in your life for certain things. But when he broke it down like that, I said, man, like the light bulb went on for me and I said, man, this is, you know, that's what you got to do. You got to, you got to look at it in that perspective and, uh, you know, just go hard and try to, try to increase your income, try to increase your investing rate. And then you'll be very happy, you know, 10 years down the line that you did. And especially like nowadays, man, that life moves so quick. You don't even remember 10 years ago. But if you do it and you just get it in there and then just keep moving, you're going to look in 10 years down the line, you're going to look and you're going to say, man, I'm so glad that I did that because look, I'm 45 years old and I don't got to work no more. So, yeah. um, you know, that's that's always in the back of my mind. And I don't let any day go to waste, man. I mean, my lady will tell you. I'm in it every day, man. So, and, and that's why, because I'm in the season of my life that I'm in the accumulation phase, that it's not always going to be this. It's not always going to be uh, go hard this long, but I'm doing it because I know down the road it's going to matter. And I know that, um, you know, my kids and my wife to be, uh, they're going to benefit and they're going to have a better life for the things that I'm doing now. Yeah, exactly. And that is one of the best decades to do it between 30 and 40. Um, obviously, we see tons of, I call them the young guns there on, on Twitter X, you know, <laughs> in their, some even in their late teens, early 20s to 25 years old. And it's amazing that they're getting in uh, that early and they're obviously setting themselves up for uh, life down the road. Even by the time, you know, maybe by the age of 40, they'll be just, you know, probably will be. Uh, but like you said, even from 30 to 45, those are 15 great years that you can really uh, make a huge difference for what's going to happen in your life once you're, you know, 60, 65, 70 and, and beyond. Right. Absolutely, man. And yeah, it's, you want to be a person that, that did it already and you're good, man. Like you don't got to worry about anything. You don't got to rely on social security. If it's even going to be around when we're older people, you don't got to worry about that because you, you, you did your work, you know, you laid your foundation and then you took care of your money. Now your money is going to take care of you. Exactly. Exactly. You, you said another uh, key thing there, which was lead by example. And I'm sure also being a teacher, especially being a phys ed teacher, lead by example is just, just has to be a core part of who you are. Absolutely, man. And I'm, I'm really, really, really a big proponent of that. Um, you know, it's, 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 that's what it is for me. It's, I, I want to be the example. 
And, uh, you know, it's it's to the little detail. It's, uh, you know, waking up in the morning and, and the girls are having breakfast and my lady's making breakfast. I put on you, you, um, Yahoo Finance every single morning. I put on a Jim Rohn video every single morning. Yeah, maybe they might not get it right now at 9, 10 years old, but they're going to remember when they're 15, 16, starting to learn about money. They're going to say, hey, I remember when he put on Yahoo Finance every morning. Let me put it on and see what's going on. Yeah. Um, and and they're gonna they're gonna be exposed to that because I didn't man when I was a kid we had no idea me and my sister we didn't grow up with that mindset we didn't we didn't grow up around money yeah we were okay we weren't poor but we there was no inclination about how much money we had if if we were poor if we weren't uh, there was no talk about that at all so I didn't even know what the word investing meant until I was thirty years old right. so you know like just just be a, a person that is you know of abundance keep your mind in the game and like i said lead lead by example be that person that people can rely on to know that you're going to show up every day and that's what i'm known for and you know like all my friends all my family uh the girls uh priscilla and my lady they all know what time it is so you know that's that's the reputation that i want and that's what i've established and i, I want it to grow and i want them to be also a person that that knows as well so you know I think that's uh, great. That's amazing. And I think there's more and more people like you that are passing on the knowledge, uh, like the financial literacy knowledge to their kids. Uh, like you, I grew up around like, again, yeah, you're right. We weren't poor either. There was always, you know, I didn't really have to worry about where the next meal was coming from. But at the same time, there was never any discussion about about money or anything like that. There was no, and obviously to this day, it's still not taught in schools. And that's <laughs> that's a whole other that's a whole other uh episode we need, a, we need another podcast, podcast for that one Dave. yeah we need another one for that one so yeah and yeah similar to you it's like you just learned what you learned on your own you know um whether it's picking up an investing book or and, and again now it is you know in this day and age so much easier you have the internet you have apps on your phone everything you can do things in a few clicks of a button or the mouse or whatever right and and you can research, you know, stocks and companies all day long. And, you know, the access to information is so much easier and better than it was, you know, 30, 35 years ago when I was growing up in the, in the mid and late eighties and early nineties. Right. So. Yeah, man, me too. Same thing. And it's like, what a time to be alive, dude. And I tell the girls too, like, I tell them at their age now, I say, I wish I had somebody like me around me when I was nine, 10 years old. <laughs> they must love hearing that. <laughs> well, you know, they're still young. So they're, they're starting slowly. They're starting. But I think, I think 10 years old is, is a, is a nice age to start influencing them about how money works and how, how to grow it. And, you know, just the overall big picture of finance. So, um, yeah. you know, that we're, we're slowly getting them into it. But let me tell you, man, by the time they're 15, 16 years old, they're going to be snipers, dude. Nice. That is awesome. Well, we've definitely covered a lot of uh, topics. And it's, again, been an absolute pleasure having you yes, here sir. back on the Passive Income Podcast. I can hardly wait till you come back again. Yeah, I definitely, you, definitely want to get you on a live stream with, uh, with a few others because uh, those are always so much fun. Yes, sir. I, I would be honored to be invited to one of those, man. I watch all of them and I'm like, man, I would really love to be involved in this. So again, Dave, thank you so much for having me, man. It's always a pleasure talking to you. You're a smart guy, man. And you know, I like, I love talking to smart people. So, uh, man, I appreciate you, dude. Yeah. Well, even right now, I am definitely not the smartest guy in the room. That, that, that definitely is you. Oh, so. <laughs> come on, man. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, and actually my apologies for not inviting you to a live stream uh panel yet because yeah th those are awesome and your input uh would just be phenomenal so definitely we'll definitely will have you on a live stream at some point in oh man don't worry about apologizing future. no no worries apologizing man i'm from new york i got tough skin dude <laughs> right awesome uh thank you again to nick you can find him on twitter at smart net worth and someday soon you might be able to find him on youtube as well <laughs> yeah for sure be on the lookout for those and if you're still here watching uh please be sure to hit the like button and if you haven't already please subscribe <laughs>